It's pretty sad when you think about it. After decades of manufacturing and some iconic nameplates, including my personal favourite, the SS Ute, Holden is about to shutter its manufacturing operations. And with that, the car built by Australia for Australia will vanish altogether. This presents a bit of a problem. Once manufacturing has finished in this country, where will enthusiasts turn to for a proper, affordable sports sedan? Well, astonishingly, this looms as the most likely candidate. Now you might say, a Kia? Come on! And I tend to agree with you, but reset everything you know about this South Korean manufacturer, because the Stinger, well, it really lives up to the name. The Stinger arrives in Australia amid plenty of hype. The nuts and bolts of it are this. Two engines, a four-cylinder and a twin-turbo V6 with pricing starting at $45,990 for the former and $48,990 for the latter. For that money, you get impressive equipment levels, five-star safety and the benefits of purchasing any new Kia, including a seven-year new car warranty and a seven-year cap price servicing program. The V6 tested here matches those traits with the performance suite including Brembo brakes, a mechanical limited slip differential and even a launch control function. It's pretty clear which buyers Kia is targeting. And herein lies the biggest test for Kia's Stinger. Now sure it has all the right performance outputs and equipment on paper, but can it really match the Commodore on the road and more specifically on the track? Now this is a very foreign concept, driving a Kia on a racetrack. The good news is the Stinger has been honed on arguably the toughest racetrack of them all, Germany's Nürburgring. And it really shows with this thing's precision and handling out on the track. Noted, it is a big car, 1,780 kilograms tear weight, but it actually handles itself really commendably around a place like Wakefield Park. The Stinger's V6 engine develops 272 kilowatts and 510 newton meters, corresponding to a 4.9 second 0 to 100 time. The engine is linear in its delivery, finding its sweet spot from about 4,000 RPM. The eight-speed automatic is a bit of a weak point by comparison with slurred shifts and no set manual option. The steering is quite pointed and over the nose feels quite a lot lighter than I would have anticipated. You do get quite a lot of body roll and it will squirrel into turns if you really do push it, but all in all, this thing is super impressive. If it was my money, I would definitely be opting for that bimodal exhaust system. It ekes a lot more emotion from the twin turbo V6, which it has to be said is quite powerful. Peak torque from 1300 RPM. You definitely don't get that beautiful induction noise or bellow that you would from something like the SS Ute, but this thing is quite a clever drivetrain. It makes power everywhere and it's easy to extract all that power at a place like a racetrack. Now yes, the Stinger is rear drive. We won't get the all drive version in Australia, but the big question, does it do skids? Well, let's have a look. <laughs> That's a yes. Where the Stinger's huge footprint and packaging begins to make more sense is on public roads, where it soaks up imperfections superbly and isolates occupants from the outside elements. The car's big proportions aren't infallible, though they do tend to work in its favour in this setting, instilling the Kia with athletic yet predictable driving traits. There's no V8 version, no manual transmission and zero chance of a utility, but you can't help but be filled with optimism about the Kia Stinger. The affordable sports sedan is back, and thankfully, this one isn't going anywhere.